Well, in this age of 24-7 perpetual news, media bias, and everything else, it's hard to uh, remember sometimes the latest uh, story from two weeks ago, the latest big story from two weeks ago. Heck, yesterday. Often you don't, remember what, you don't remember what the big story was. Well, as you may recall, just a couple weeks ago, uh, we had a former president come within a couple inches of being killed, and so I felt that it was worthy of, you know, my attention at least a little bit. So today we're going to go back and read, uh, thanks to this article from the New York Times, huh, first time I've ever said that, I think. Um, we're going to go back, read through it, and I'll provide my own commentary as well, and uh, cover what we know so far about the Trump assassination attempt. Let's get into it. America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. So, yes, indeed, we will be reading from what Andrew Clavin has called a former newspaper, uh, the New York Times. So, might as well go ahead and get started. And if you're wondering, Adam, you don't usually just read straight from our article. You're usually a little bit more, uh, you know, you're a little bit more in depth than you usually do your own research and everything and, you know, pre prepare your own notes. Well, that's very true. But uh, the fact is, I've been very busy as of late and uh, did not have time or the uh, desire, to be quite honest, between all the other stuff I'm trying to fit in, to prepare a whole laundry list of show notes. So, with that said, we're going to be reading from the New York Times article, this by, what's his name? Uh, Michael Levinson. I have not heard of him. But it's what we know about the assassination attempt against Trump. The former president was holding a rally when he was shot in his right ear. Two people, including the suspected gunman, were killed and two were critically injured. <clears throat> okay, let's get into it. A man fired multiple shots toward the stage during former President Donald J. Trump's rally in Butler, Pennsylvania on the evening of July 13th, killing one spectator critically injuring two others and wounding Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump was rushed off the stage with a bullet wound in his right ear and was pronounced fine. <clears throat> I kind of thought that was a weird way to um, phrase it. He was pronounced fine, but then I remembered uh, that is how the Secret Service phrased it as well, that he was just fine. So a little bit of an interesting way to put it, but that's the line they've been running with. So, you know, uh, the Secret Service said its agents had killed the shooter, whom federal law enforcement officials identified as Thomas Matthew Crooks, a 20-year-old from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Keeping in mind, of course, that this does appear to be the only 20-year-old uh, in America, if not the world, that has no social media. Uh, so, and then, I do think I recall, yeah, the FBI wasn't able to get into his phone. I think they've cracked the case now, but, um, yeah. A very secure guy. I remember he had all the VPNs and everything, so uh, more on that later. Uh, the Attorney General's office and the FBI are investigating the shooting as an assassination attempt and possible domestic terrorism attack. Here's what we know about the shooting. Uh, Mr. Trump ducked quickly after the shots began, and as members of the crowd began to scream. Secret Service agents then rushed Mr. Trump off the stage. As he was escorted to his motorcade, Mr. Trump, whose face and right ear were bloodied, pumped his fist in a defiant gesture to the crowd. And of course, <coughs> excuse me, of course that is now uh, one of the most iconic photos in American history. You thought the mugshot would uh, go places. Well, this is going down literally in history. The mugshot may not, but... um. This really will go down in history. The one, specifically the American flag in the background and the one where he's going like this with his fist and the blood's trickling down. And, of course, what they're saying, uh, you know, the the libs, not as many mainstream, but especially the crazy, uh, you know, blue-haired lefties on Twitter are all saying, well, that was all staged because how else could they get that, icon that iconic photo? When I first watched the video, I couldn't believe how fast the photographers were up there. Even, like, barely after shots were even done, the photographers were just, boom, they were up there getting every picture they could which is how we have so many angles. So uh, kudos to them, I guess. That was awfully brave. Um, I'm not sure I would have done that, but, you know, they got us some nice pictures out of the deal. So, um, you know, thank the Lord for little blessings, I guess. Um, at the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, in his first public speech after the assassination attempt, Mr. Trump described his personal experience of the shooting. As you already know, the assassin's bullet came within a quarter of an inch of taking my life, Mr. Trump said. On July 26, the FBI director, Christopher Wray, told Congress that Mr. Trump had been struck in the ear by a bullet, whether whole or fragmented into smaller pieces, ending in ambiguity that had lingered over Mr. Trump's injury since the attack. The shooter fired from the roof of a warehouse less than 500 feet from Mr. Trump, but it was outside the zone. I just thought I'd let you know. I remember it, was, it was outside the security um, perimeter. <clears throat> Therefore, I mean, things like this just happen, you know? Sometimes a former president gets killed, you know? What are we going to do about it? We, we did our job. Uh, I read one commenter saying that, yeah, the Secret Service protected Trump, therefore they did their job. I feel like I don't really need to respond to that. You just, you know, you can work through that in your own mind. 
I do most profusely apologize for interrupting your viewing experience, but I just want to request real quick that if you would, take a second to subscribe to the Finery 5 YouTube channel and help us reach more people. Thanks so much. Analysis by the New York Times suggested that the gunman fired eight shots. And I will tell you what, what a piece of journalism by the New York Times, too, because, I mean, when you listen to that, you hear, like, you count them, and it might even take you a couple of times to count, but you're like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight shots. Yeah, so... Um, I'm extremely pleased to hear that they have verified that um, uh, our brains and ears still work. Uh, the gunman fired eight shots. Intrepid journalism by uh, uh, the people speaking truth to power over there at the New York Times. And I will say, in all in all fairness, actually a little bit of sarcasm aside, um, there are some different sort of popping sounds you can hear in the uh, in the audio recording that are not gunshots. So it does appear to be um, <clears throat> eight shots. And so I'm just giving them a hard time because they royally deserve every bit of it. But it is a little bit like it's a little bit overly dramatic by them. Then an analysis by the New York Times suggested that the gunman fired eight shots, a whole shroud of mystery. The FBI has identified the gunman as Thomas Matthew Crooks. He graduated from the community college of Allegheny County in May and was employed at a nursing home. Oh, that's comforting. He was with a bunch of old people. Okay. Uh, high school classmates described Mr. Crooks as intelligent but solitary. Law enforcement officials, oh, and by the way, as to that goes, um, you know, they were trying to run the story after the fact that the one classmate of his saying he was bullied in high school, so I thought they were going to try to get that and run. It was He's actually more the victim here. Um, you know, he, he's the poor bullied kid, and he probably had something wrong with his wrong with him mentally because of it. He had anxiety or whatever. Um, uh, I would say that has not worked, actually. I thought that's what they were going to go for was the sympathy pitch, and it didn't work, so... Um, you know, I am pleased with that because usually with these things, whether it be a mass shooter at a church or especially when it comes to a church or even a school or whatever, certainly Covenant, uh, the Covenant school shooting, they, they usually try to make the shooter the victim somehow <clears throat> because that's how our media is. Any, any sort of chaos or violence they can promote, they're down with. Uh, law enforcement officials recovered an AR-15 type semi-automatic rifle from Mr. Crooks' body, scary, that had been legally purchased by the shooter's father. Mr. Cook, Crooks brought the, bought the rifle from his father in October. I appar apparently, I could be wrong, but I don't believe that's illegal in Pennsylvania. I'm sure they um, would have uh, mentioned that. Um, I'm sure it's illegal in some states, but it does appear to be legal here. Hopefully Mr. Crooks' parents do not get... Um, uh, pressed with charges for this or getting big trouble because honestly it probably wasn't their fault. Everyone's going to point immediately and say bad parenting. You remember the case from either earlier this year or last year. I think it was earlier this year where the parents of uh, some kid who I think was also a shooter was were thrown to jail. So um, unless there was legitimate neglect or bad, really bad parenting here in terms of like abuse or something, then these parents probably shouldn't face consequences, especially if there weren't warning signs ahead of time. Uh, federal law enforcement officials discovered three explosive devices connected to Mr. Crooks. One of the devices was found in his home, and two others were found in his car parked near the rally. That's an interesting detail we don't really know anything else about yet. It's like, okay, so we, we found the uh, <clears throat> we found the uh, explosives, and we, no one really knows why he had them, if he was planning on blowing something else up or what. Uh, the casualties of the man who was killed at the rally was Corey Comparatore. I covered that in my initial video about this, 50 a married father of two daughters from Sarver, Pennsylvania, who worked at a plastic manufacturing company and was a volunteer firefighter. Mr. Comparatore was fatally shot in the head after he dove to cover family members who accompanied him to the rally, according to Governor Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania. David Dutch, 57, of New Kingsington, Pennsylvania, and James Copenhaver, 74, of Moon Township, Pennsylvania, were critically injured in the shooting. Both of those people have thankfully survived, so praise the Lord for that. <clears throat> uh, the shooting happened as Mr. Trump was holding a large outdoor rally. On the grounds of the Butler Farm Butler Farm Show in Butler, a town of 13,000 people about 34 miles north of Pittsburgh. Mr. Trump had been showing supporters a chart about the number of border crossings just minutes into the speech when the shots rang out. Attendees screamed, get down, get down, and shots fired. The Secret Service quickly cleared the press area, moved the crowd out, and declared the area a crime scene. Some Trump supporters held hands and prayed and then chanted USA. Multiple investigations are underway to understand how a would-be assassin managed to open fire in the vicinity of a presidential candidate, and if you imply for a single moment that this was due to Secret Service uh, negligence or intentional fault or DEI, well, then you're a very bad person. I just want you to understand that. you're. Uh, prob uh, yeah, you probably... Uh, you're, you're a real bad person. That's what, that's what I would say. I, I pronounce you're a very bad person. 
The FBI is leading the investigation to the shooter's motives in the assassination attempt and has gained access to the gunman's phone and at least one laptop. <laughs> FBI finally found their way in. Well done. FBI officials told members of Congress that the shooter used his cell phone and other devices to search for images of Mr. Trump and President Biden, along with an array of public figures. On July 24th, Mr. Ray told Congress that Mr. Crooks typed the words, How far away from was Oswald from Kennedy? into an online search, apparently researching the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Congress and the Department of Homeland Security have opened their own investigations into broader security failures, including by the Secret Service. Kimberly A. Cheadle, the director of the Secret Service, resigned on July 23rd. Um, <clears throat> so, that's the end of the article. I think uh, one thing that should be remembered is how incompetent the Secret Service was. Was it willful incompetence or was it legit malice even? Like, were, were they trying to get Trump killed or was it just like a oh, you know, it wouldn't be the worst thing if that had happened, you know, kind of little, you know, intentional negligence, so to speak. So, again, we still don't know. Chances are, at this point, we may never know. Um, we have a habit recently in this country of covering up uh, details, very crucial details about big events such as shootings. See, again, Covenant School. Kimberly Cheadle, of course, of sloped roof fame. Uh, I don't know how that got on the screen. That was... Put in, that was in post. I, I, can't, I don't know how that happened. I, I have nothing to do with this photo you're seeing right now. It's, it's not funny either. Stop laughing. Uh, of slow proof fame, uh, of course, she did resign July 23rd, which I believe was the day after her testimony, her horrible testimony um, before Congress, where she got absolutely lit on fire by even some le the less conservative members of Congress, even some Democrats. So uh, that gives some people the speculation. They're, they're speculating, uh, you know, was this a limited hangout? Were they intentionally letting uh, Cheadle, uh, were they intentionally kind of roasting her and intentionally forcing her out so we, so hopefully the American people would kind of be pacified and not look any further into it or want to know any further information. So far, I don't know that I can say it has worked, but no one's reporting on or talking about it anymore. A president just got nearly assassinated three weeks ago and we're already acting like that never even happened, like no one's even talking about it, which is part of the reason I'm making this video. All that to say, still a lot of details we don't know. We know more than we did. Obviously, there's a lot more there. We know the Secret Service um, saw the guy ahead of time. We he I mean he was spotted three different times I believe. That we have video from body cams of them radioing him in as having suspicious activity, um, or as hold uh, carrying out suspicious activity is what I'm looking for. And I mean again they spotted him three different times. He had a rangefinder one time. He had a backpack, and they did nothing. There were there were snipers in the roof or in the building, but not on the roof that he climbed up. They lost sight of him. They didn't go to look for him. I mean, my goodness, at least seemingly, if they did, they didn't stop him. We had the officer who confronted him and then dropped back down the ladder after confronting him at the top of the ladder, and then uh, Crooks apparently took uh, took the shots. I mean, an incredible amount of either incompetence, willful negligence, or malice, or some of all three. So we're going to find out hopefully more details. So I'm don't just quit talking about this. I mean, it's Again, the story is kind of, being, kind of being, I don't know if it's being intentionally memory hold, as some would say, kind of an Orwellian term, but it's certainly not really being talked about as much as it should, and we need answers from the federal government. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we're anytime soon going to get them. In the words of our great president, look here, Jack. I'll challenge you to push-ups, but that's neither here nor there. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fight and Revive YouTube channel and help us reach more people with our conservative message.